All right, good. Hey, welcome back, Mobility Wad. We are in CrossFit Mayhem Actual, Little Mayhem, or as we say in the Deep South, Mayhem. 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 Uh, you might recognize him. Um, great synchronized swimming team, right? Uh, uh, I forget which one the base. Uh, Rich Brown and Dan Bailey, two of my CrossFit superheroes. And uh, when you have two Formula One athletes in the room, what you should talk about, obviously, is scaling the knee push up. And so today we're going to talk about shoulder mechanics as it relates to uh, kind of high level performance. And also we want to take on what one of my good friends calls the wilting lotus blossom for people who are doing knee push-ups who never spontaneously ever become actual push-uppers. So here's what's going on. I'm going to get these guys in a good push-up position. Go ahead. One of the things you'll notice about good athletes is that they have a universal motor pattern. And that when they press or push up or ring dip or jerk overhead, that the forearm tends to stay very vertical, much like the shit going to push up does. And so they end up, and go to lay out when you're on the ground to rest, they end up with a very vertical forearm, which looks exactly like a vertical shin in the bottom of the squat. This allows for kind of peak function of the chest, keeps and minimizes the shear of the elbow, and has a better loading strategy. Go to press back up. So now, it looks a lot like their bench press. In fact, if you lay back down, which is being over-exaggerated here, but if you lay back down and put a bar in their hands, that's precisely where they do bench pressing. And so what ends up happening is that the push-up becomes an excellent skill transfer exercise for the bench press. Now here's the deal. When, when these guys are in this position, this also makes it very efficient. So even in a pinche exercise like the burpee, where they're dropping down, go ahead and jump back up, guys, and drop down, to a burpee again, and back and forth, boom. You want to see them kind of roughly adopt the same position. And what we'll see is that in high rep iterations of this conditioning exercise, people will lean elbow first, they'll end up in, in this sort of compromised shoulder forward position, and what ends up happening is we end up having kind of a load sequencing area. It's the equivalent of having my knees come forward first in the squat and wondering why I'm not getting good tricep function and then why I'm getting slumped in the shoulder. So what we want to do is reinforce this good position. And one of our little lie detectors tests come from Carl Pavley gymnastics also press up. And you can tell if you have a good push-up by turning your hand around backwards. So you wouldn't turn your hands all around backwards, lads. And what happens in this position is that if you've got a good push-up, burp, not squeezed, you have no discipline! And what happens is that if, you, if your butt, uh, if your butt squeezes, we're not going to touch the guy's butt, I'm all distracted now. So if the forearm is vertical, and we're forcing that vertical form. They can do a push-up now. We do push-up guys. And look how far forward they translate. And all we've done is because the wrist is blocked, we can just basically force people into a normal pattern. And it feels very, very far out. If you follow Carl Powell's work, you'll notice that the hand is in front. The head is in front of the hands. And Dan is a little bit stiff, so he's way out in front. But go ahead and press back up. And turn your hands around backwards. And it should look roughly as a similar analog. Go ahead and do it again. And they go forward, and then that head makes that tripod, which is a kind of a universal pattern. So here's the problem. When we see athletes on their knees, looking at their knees, guys, like we're going to scale this thing, okay? We work with beginner athletes, and both of you guys are really good coaches. We ask people to do push-ups on their knees. Now go ahead and get to a knee push-up position, and go ahead and squeeze your butt for me. And oh, you have a real hard time doing that. In fact, you can't really control your back. And then do a push-up without trashing your elbow for me. Can you do that? Oh, it's really weird, isn't it? You end up doing that, and that's not what people do. Press back up. What end up, people end up doing is not being able to extend and then leave with the elbow. And so they sort of end up in this horrible purgatory where we have allowed them to stabilize their spine and we put them in a compromised elbow shoulder position at infinitum. So we put them into a kind of repetitive motor pattern that never is going to blossom into all the fun things. So instead, what we like to do is have people in a push up position. They can't do a push up. They lower themselves down, keeping that forearm vertical, and then they worm back up. There we go, much better option. And as a coach, whoa, that was an Oreo ball that just came up. <laughs> as a coach, what I can do is I can walk up and literally physically block the elbow during a warm-up, and then he does a push-up, and then he gets immediate contact into my forearm or into my, into my shin, and then we just dictate. Because what we want to do is we want to see this universal motor pattern. And what we're seeing is that when people complain, push-up is a brilliant movement. It's mid-range pressing. Everyone needs to be able to do this. It doesn't challenge end-range kind of mobility, but we see this kind of loading order, and when we see this mistake, it usually accompanies with people complaining about shoulder pain and emotion. So I'm going to press again, and then my wife wanted to ask again, if you guys would mind doing this with your shirts off, is that okay? Ten times. 
Mobility Plus. <laughs> Mobility Plus. <laughs> Dan Bailey, Rich Ronnie. See you guys tomorrow. Awesome.